The Sexual Productive Health and Rights Alliance Uganda is a consortium of organizations that have very strong niche in programming for adolescents and young people, especially uh, targeting their sexual productive health issues. Partners uh, presented an opportunity for a new program, a new program that would address the needs of young people, a new program that on top of what we're doing would also give a voice, a stronger voice relating to the issues of young people. So there was the opportunity to start working on the proposal for Get Up, Speak Out. The problem that drove this program was around uh, SRHR challenges that young people continue to face in the eastern region, specifically Busoga. You realize that especially young people in primary schools, in secondary schools, as well as young people out of school, um, weren't empowered enough to realize their SRHR. Our motivation for the GUSO program was informed by the experience that we had just uh, had from the United for Health Tomorrow program and the Access Services and Knowledge program, which were both targeted towards increasing access to young people's SRH information and services, especially in Eastern Uganda and a bit of Northern Uganda. So the Alliance has eight members. We have Straight Talk Foundation, the Nafofano, we have UNIPA, we have SEHAD, we have Restless Development, we have FLEP, and we also have Rich Hand Uganda and Reproductive Health Uganda. So a, a number of partners uh, were on board and we started working on this proposal. It was intense, a lot of discussion and a lot of reflection uh, from, our, from the many partners. Under this GUSO program, these partners work together in, and in a coordinated way. And it's right from the planning, how those who are very good on information are linking with those who are very good in service delivery and the two packages are working together. That has really been unique about the program. The Agusa project, which is Get Up, Speak Out for Youth Rights, has given us confidence to talk to the people in the community. Today I'm employed as a data clerk or uh, an M&E with St. Francis Also Care Services. But this was also as a result of being empowered by the program of the Guso. I came to know very many things concerning family planning, talking to my friends, telling them to go for HIV testing and other things. I wouldn't become the national Mr. Y+. Plus. I wouldn't have represented young people living with HIV at the International AIDS Conference 2018 in Amsterdam. It was a five years project and I had an opportunity to implement it for about three years. I can already confidently say that even by the three years we had started realizing the impact of GUSO. Throughout the programming of this, uh, the implementation of this project, it has been youth driven. Whether we are planning community activities, whether we are engaging the leaders, whether we are carrying out sensitization, the young people are the ones who have been driving the show. We know that a lot of the young people have been able to access services in the communities of uh, Iganga, Bujiri, Mayuge and Jinja. There are a lot of networks of young people that we've been able to, 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 to bring up. There are clubs uh, uh, for young people living with HIV. There are clubs in schools, there are clubs in communities. And a lot of these champions, even when the project is coming to an end, have continued uh, to, uh, to support the work that we started. We worked with young people who were in school and young people out of school. But by the end of three years, I can tell you that the urgency of these young people had greatly improved. Programs had also continuously pulled out issues of information, lack of correct and accurate information to young people, especially those who are in the far deep areas, because uh, we had gone and done research in areas of Namayingo, areas of Mayuge, where the need for information was very, very serious. A lot of work was actually done with local leaders, religious leaders and the different uh, district officials to ensure that they are more responsive and respectful to young people's SRHR. So I think um, what drove this program was aligning well with what the program actually intended to reach to and I believe especially if we later have an opportunity to interact with evaluation reports and inline reports I believe a lot of impact has been achieved through this five years program. After successful implementation of 
two programs, the United for Healthy Tomorrow and Access to Services and Knowledge uh, that were being implemented in eastern Uganda, there were still a number of issues. Currently we are all aware that the SRHR outcomes in Uganda are poor indeed, but for the eastern region they are very wanting. So I feel it was timely and relevant and it, it is such an intervention that needs to be replicated or even scaled up, especially based on the key learnings that are coming up from the ending project. For us as the Alliance team, the challenge we have is how do we carry the legacy of GUSO? Because this has been one of the most successful program. We have documented so many best practices. We have the, one of the biggest number of outcomes that have come out of this program. So how do we sustain this? And how do we build our alliance around it? There were still a number of issues. There were a lot of cases of uh, teenage pregnancies. There's still so many cases of uh, child marriages. We still had a number of cases uh, uh, relating to HIV and STI infections. And we felt what we had done actually was not enough. We still needed to work more and more intensely in Eastern Uganda. Going forward, uh, whether it's in government program, whether it's in uh, other projects being implemented, we should make sure that the young people are at the forefront. Mm -hmm.